It's 10 a.m. on WKYT Midmorning. Weeks of talks and threats come down to today. Lawmakers in Frankfurt are about to take up a vote on a newly agreed upon state budget. A family is searching for an Eastern Kentucky woman who's been missing for a month. And a special treat for UK fans. Details on a surprise guest at today's Maker's Mark bottle signing out at Keeneland. This is WKYT Midmorning. Good morning to you. It's your Friday. We finally got here. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara <laughs> Bailey. And boy, it's a special treat for all of us here in Kentucky. A gorgeous start to the day, and it even gets better as we continue through the weekend. And right on time with so many uh, events going on. The blue-white game tomorrow, Keeneland, obviously. And a lot of folks just wanting to have a yard sale or something. You know, uh, people have waited for this, Micah. A long time, yeah. Because you got to remember last month, it was three, four days of really nice temperatures. Then it crashes on down. Three, four days, then it crashes on now. We're not looking at that. We have a nice string of 70s in the forecast and also nice conditions. Here's Live Sky Camera. There's a look around Lexington. Let's zoom out. I want to show you what I was talking about this morning. See those little blips down towards, say, Jackson County or, or Jackson there uh, with McKee and also just south of that into, say, Clay County, Manchester area, back toward London. You got a couple of sprinkles here and there. That's the way it's going to be throughout the afternoon as you get a few blips here and there. Already 64. Look at that in Lexington and Richmond. It feels amazing outside right now. It's only what, 10.01? We hit the afternoon, 72 degrees. Stray shower is still possible, but for the most part, most of us do stay dry. We're going to go over that and your weekend forecast coming up. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Thank you. Well, the Kentucky Constitution says this is the last day of the 2016 legislative session, and the agreed upon state budget still needs to be approved. Governor Matt Bevan also must approve it. But because it took lawmakers this long to reach a deal, they will not be able to override any vetoes Bevan may make to the budget. It calls for less cuts in funding to state universities than what go the governor has proposed. University of Kentucky President Dr. Eli Capaluto says he's pleased to see that lawmakers have reached an agreement on the state budget. In a statement, Capaluto said, quote, I am very appreciative of Governor Bevan's willingness to restore a portion of his mid-year reduction to our current state appropriation. Family members of a murdered Mercer County teenager are hoping to learn a possible motive now that police have made an arrest. State police say 17-year-old Tristan Cole was found shot to death Wednesday night in a Mercer County field. They say another teenager is charged with murder and robbery in the case. Cole's cousin says he was a good kid who liked to go hunting and fishing with his family. Good sickening, just a hard sickening to think, you know, that you don't know if your child's going to come home. Cole's family is asking for help in paying for his funeral expenses. You can find a link on how to donate for that at WKYT.com. The NAACP chapter in Lexington is calling for the resignations of some leaders at Lexington Catholic High School. The request comes after a 14-year-old student says he was harassed and threatened by a teammate because he's black. That teammate is facing charges in the case. Another African-American student claims he was assaulted by a white classmate. The NAACP has since met with the bishop of the diocese and is calling for the school's principal and the school's president to resign. The community is crying out right now. Uh, and so I, we believe that in order to transform that culture, it has to start at the top. Now, a spokesman for the Diocese of Lexington said in a statement that the bishop hopes the NAACP can be a resource moving forward against the remnants of racism. The two are scheduled to meet again next week. We reached out to Lexington Catholic High School, but no one returned our request for a comment. Family members of a Clay County woman who has been missing now for weeks are pleading for help. 30-year-old Angela Smith has not been seen since March 12th. Her home on Little Creek Road in the Redbird community burned to the ground last month. Firefighters say there were no signs of anyone at the home before the fire started, and that is adding to the mystery. Not knowing that we'll ever get to see her again, just, it's just always on our minds. Just, it's never going to leave till we get some answers. Smith's sister says she never went anywhere without telling her family. 
The owner of a central Kentucky farm is assessing the damage this morning after a barn was destroyed in an early morning fire. That barn sits off Willoughby Town Road in rural Montgomery County, about five miles south of Jeffersonville. The barn is a total loss. The property owner says there were some baby chickens inside and a lot of farm equipment. The owner also says a heat lamp may have started that fire. Police arrested an Ohio man who was accused of coming to Kentucky to have sex with a minor. Jeffrey Gill was arrested in Georgetown. The Kentucky Attorney General's office says he posted an ad online saying he was looking for a young teen for sex. They say an undercover officer posed as a teenager and responded. Investigators say when they arrested Gill in the parking lot of the Georgetown Dairy Queen, they found prescription drugs and marijuana in his truck. They also said he had rented a room in Georgetown town for the purpose of having sex with a teen. Eight African American men have been awarded more than five million dollars in a discrimination lawsuit against UPS in Lexington. In the lawsuit, the men claim they endured a hostile work environment. They say at one point an effigy of a black UPS driver was hung from a ceiling. A jury found UPS discriminated against one of the eight men, and the company retaliated against two others after they complained. UPS says it's considering an appeal. Well, to get a job at Kentucky's new Noah's Ark attraction, you must first pledge your Christianity. The Grant County theme park is searching for 300 to 400 workers to fill food service, ticketing, and other positions. The 510 foot long Ark Encounter will be opening up in July. Ken Ham, the founder of the ministry Answers in Genesis, says employees will be required to sign a statement saying they are Christian and, quote, profess Christ as their Savior. The group won a court ruling that said it can make religious-based hires even as it seeks a state tax incentive. Tennessee's governor has vetoed a bill that would have made the Bible the official state book. The bill narrowly passed both chambers of Tennessee's legislature. Sponsors said it would honor the historical contributions of the Bible, but the state's attorney general warned the bill would violate the Constitution. Lawmakers could still override the veto as Tennessee only requires majorities in both chambers. Well, today is April 15th, but this year you have a few extra days to file your tax returns. They're due Monday. The deadline was pushed back because today is Emancipation Day, which is recognized in the District of Columbia. Wallet Hub says Americans spend on average 16 hours doing their taxes. It's a task so dreaded, 27% of people surveyed said they would get an IRS, IRS tattoo if they could avoid taxes for life. Well, that's <laughs> unusual. Uh, right, but they just wanted to see how far people would go, I guess. Well, fans of UK basketball and bourbon camped out all night at Keeneland to get a special bottle of Maker's Mark signed by some UK greats. They were up early this morning. The commemorative bottle features coach Joe B. Hall, and it celebrates the 1978 NCAA championship team. Four players from that team are at the Keeneland signing, uh, at Keeneland signing those bottles today. And Coach Hall also made a surprise visit. They were there and the legend walked in. This morning we caught up with the first person in line who told us why he does. So it's very exciting to get to go. And you know, you get to see all these people and, and it's just a challenge to do. You got to set something to do in your life. And you get my age, this is part of it, you know. I'm going to collect my maker's mark that I can't do it anymore. The bottle signing continues until 11.30 this morning. All bottle sales will benefit UK Athletic Association's Center for Academic and Tutorial Services. Good crowd out there this morning. Well, and great weather for it, too. That hasn't always been That's the case right. on those bottle signings. <laughs> yeah, some mornings it's been cold out there. It was good today. Well, we're still a few months away from the start of the football season, but UK fans can get an early taste of it this weekend. The annual blue-white game is tomorrow at Commonwealth Stadium. Fans can come out and watch the football team face off against each other and the weather is going to be great if you plan on tailgating. The game starts at noon. Tickets are free but if you can't make it to the stadium you can see the game on the SEC network. All right, should be fun. And again, weather's just right. I know it's <laughs> like here it is the weekend. Yep. Well, keep it right here on mid morning. It's a mystery fit for Scooby Doo and the gang. Oh, and You'll find out how firefighters rescued a huge dog that got stuck way up in a tree.
That was actually a pretty good impression by Bill. Gorgeous weekend in store after today, though. Today, we can't rule out all rain chance. I'm going to talk about that and show you where I expect the chance coming up. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Already a nice feeling day outside. We're not even hitting noontime just yet. So as you step out the doors, temperatures are already in the 60s for virtually all locations. We're at 64 right now. As we travel off into uh, the next several hours, we're going to be seeing those temperatures uh, climb to the 70s. I want to show you this down southbound. Southbound is where you are going to see the chance of maybe a couple of sprinkles popping up or a passing shower through the next couple of hours. You can see that. There's a little boundary right through here. You see that popping up coming out of Clay County, about to head into uh, Laurel County. Uh, London heads up. You might have a sprinkle here in just about 30 minutes if it holds together. But what we're going to be seeing out of this area, that's, that's more likely the back edge. And look which way it's moving. It's actually moving from east to west. That's kind of flip flop from what we're typically seeing uh, as we travel along uh, the rest of the afternoon. It looks like that's going to be the area to actually pick up a stray shower or two. 20, 30 percent, obviously not a washout. And this whole area does not mean, when you look at this, this does not mean you're going to get a lot of rain. It doesn't mean it's going to be widespread. I'm just showing you the best chance to actually see a pop up shower in, in the area. Northbound into Maysville, not a good chance with so all, virtually zero. Moorhead, virtually zero. Hazard, work your way back toward Prestonsburg, virtually zero. But where you are across 64 corridor, including Lexington, Frankfurt, and southbound, you could have a pop up stray shower. But they last five minutes, they're long gone. Do not cancel any plans later on this afternoon because of that. Because it's not going to be much, if any, at all. Most of us actually stay dry today. 72 degrees by the afternoon with that slight chance of rain. Mixture of sun and clouds for most. It's a really good feeling. You can feel the moisture outside. It's a little sticky outside. And that's from the moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. Off into the evening, any plans going out to dinner? You can sit out on the patio. I mean, it's a really good feel tomorrow morning for the 5Ks. All of that looks great, too. Here's your seven day forecast and what you can expect. Uh, a straight shower, once again, possible, especially I 64 southbound. Then tomorrow and Sunday, the weekend forecast looks phenomenal. And the reason why I say that is because you're not having any chance of rain tomorrow nor Sunday. And temperatures will be in the low to mid 70s. I mean, you talk about a really good weekend. It's one of those weekends you just don't want to be indoors. If you're ones that like to take naps uh, in the, in the uh, midday on Saturday or Sunday, like me, I love taking my my <laughs> afternoon naps for the weekend. That. If you're one of those, sleep outside, man. I, I actually I actually laid on my uh, little bench outside my back patio furniture yesterday. It was perfect weather. You use the really sunscreen was. first. Yeah, so. you got to put that on. If you're going to yeah. fall asleep, now you fall Absolutely. off and break your wrist. <laughs> Exactly. There you go. I would do yeah. that. You're Be right. careful. All right. How does a 120 pound Great Dane get stuck way up about 20 feet up in a tree? Great question, <laughs> isn't it? Cora had to jump a five foot fence just to get to the tree. Firefighters were called in to help her get down. Now, they said at first they thought they were being pranked. They used a harness for a police canine to lower Cora down, but her weight caused the harness to break. Luckily, part of the rescue crew was able to break her fall. Her owner thinks she chased a squirrel or a raccoon up the tree. Just had to have it. Uh, right, and apparently <laughs> Cora had uh, no plan as to how to get back down. So. Yeah. <laughs> Firefighters but to the rescue. It ended safely, yeah. so that's good. Well, the ASPCA threw a party for its favorite celebrity, and the Cannes Film Festival revealed its star-studded lineup. Suzanne Marquez has your eye on entertainment. Sean Penn will be back in the headlines next month at the Cannes Film Festival. His film, The Last Face, starring Charlize Theron, will be among 20 movies in the running for the top prize. The festival opens May 11th with Woody Allen's romance, Cafe Society, a take on 1930s Hollywood. Drew Barrymore was guest of honor at a celebrity-packed event in New York. The ASPCA honored the actress with its Compassion Award at a black tie party at the Plaza Hotel. The award recognizes Barrymore's outstanding contributions to animal welfare. Yeah, this got to be some of my best work. I bet he won't be talking back to his mama no more. The latest installment of the Barbershop series brings some close shaves for the crew at Calvin's Barbershop. Hey, shoot not there. Ice Cube and Cedric the Entertainer take steps to boost their troubled Chicago neighborhood. They hope they'll inspire audiences to make real change in their own communities. It was just great to be able to deliver that message with humor. 
and to 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 kind of sneak it in on you. Barbershop, the next cut, arrives in theaters today. That's your Ion Entertainment. Suzanne Marquez, CBS News, Los Angeles. Well, coming right up, from lowering cancer risks to preventing obesity, the payoff is good for both baby and mother. The benefits of breastfeeding, next on WKYT. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is $80 million, and Saturday night's Powerball jackpot is $205 million. We'll be right back on Midmorning. Welcome back. Great to have you with us here on WKYT at Midmorning. It has great health benefits for both baby and mom, such as reducing the chances of chronic illnesses, obesity, even lowering the rates of certain cancers. We're talking about breastfeeding, and for more, we're joined by Kelly Wilhite, a certified nurse midwife. Welcome. I'm glad to have you here. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. And you brought this. What does this represent? So it appears to be a glass of gumballs, which it is. But for today, it represents the risks that we carry with us. Our community is plagued with chronic illness. And we have certain diseases that maybe we've inherited throughout our lives or have occurred because of exposures that we really can't do anything to prevent. Uh, breastfeeding is one thing that women can do to help prevent some of these chronic illnesses. Well, what are, what's the latest research? What are the findings right now about uh, the importance or benefits of breastfeeding? Well, one of the more interesting research topics right now is centered about uh, Hamlet, which is a protein lipid complex. It sounds very technical, but that is isolated from human milk. And what they found is when this Hamlet comes into contact with cancer cells or precancerous cells, it causes that cell to self-destruct. Mm -hmm. And they think that this might be one of the reasons why newborns and adults alike may have less risk of cancer um, when they breastfeed. Boy, that's a, a really important finding there. Uh, what do you think is the biggest concern or the biggest challenge for moms when it comes to breastfeeding? So the biggest concern that I hear is moms are really fearful that they're not producing enough milk. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the inability to produce enough milk is quite rare. So most moms are going to be able to produce enough milk for their babies. And the key is early feeding, getting the baby to the mom early on, skin to skin contact, and then support from their family and community is important to make them feel reassured that they're doing a good job. Yeah, it was going to say, and society is evolving certainly on, uh, on the issue of, uh, of making them comfortable as well, right? Which is, uh, has to be important. Absolutely. And one of the biggest forms of support can come from their family. So there's a lot that a mother's family can do in terms of making her feel reassured giving her confidence, offering her little tips, and giving her a glass of water, just the little things can help. And as a community, we can do a better job of supporting breastfeeding mothers as well. And that, in terms of businesses, giving them time and privacy to breastfeed or pump milk, um, it goes a long way. So as a community, supporting breastfeeding is very helpful in making our community and the people in it more healthy. And so if moms have a hard time getting started with it, it is worth it to hang in there. Absolutely, and they don't have to do it alone. There are many professionals that can help them outside of midwives and IBCLCs. Other moms who have breastfed can be a great source of support. All right. Kelly, thanks for coming in. Thank Good you Good information so much. today. We appreciate it. And Thank you me. can start cutting down on the gumballs or the risks <laughs> that right. way. That's right. By doing yes. it. That's good. <laughs> well, keep it right here this midmorning. Back in a moment, and we'll be checking in with the Mr. Food Test Kitchen next. And look at that. Doesn't that look good for the weekend? Back in a moment. We're glad you're with us today. This ooey gooey <laughs> cookie recipe will make you feel like a billion bucks. Okay. <laughs> Before you have to take your walk, right? Today <laughs> in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen is Billionaire Bars. It's April 15th, and that means it's tax day. And whether you got your taxes done weeks ago, or you're going to be scrambling to get them done by midnight, we have a little something for you that's so good, it'll make you feel like a billion bucks. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All we do is place a package of shortbread cookies in a food processor and pulse it until they're finely crushed. To that, we add some melted butter. And after that's mixed, we pour it into a baking dish and pat it down to make a crust. While this firms up in the fridge, we combine a package of caramels with some heavy cream and heat this until it's smooth. Once it is, we pour it over the crust and sort of smear it so it levels off before popping it back in the fridge to set up. 
On top of this, we'll go a layer of chocolate chips that we melted with a little vegetable shortening. After that chills for a bit, cut it and get ready for a homemade candy bar that's worth its weight in gold. So whether your taxes are done or not, my suggestion is you go online and get the recipe for what we call billionaire bars. So you can indulge in something that will make you feel like a billion bucks. I'm Howard with Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a richer way and a less taxing way mm. for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm, it's very good. And you can enjoy that all weekend because tax day really this year isn't until Monday. Monday, so. right. <laughs> and I thought I heard billionaire Barb. That has a ring, doesn't well, it? Well, yeah, it, it would. I wish it were true. <laughs> that would be, be a nice. great thing. Get to work yeah. on that and then share with us, will you? Exactly would love right. it. Yeah, let's look at the forecast real quick. 72 degrees today. That goes into your weekend, low to mid 70s. The difference from the weekend and today is the weekend has no chance of rain. Today we're talking 20, 30%. A stray shower is possible. Doesn't last long. Don't cancel any plans. I'm going to show you the area where I expect that chance coming up on uh, news at noon. I almost said mid morning, but news at noon. We're yeah, this already is there. Mid yeah, we are on. Noon. It's almost the weekend. <laughs> All there right. we go. Thank you so much for being with us at mid morning, and we'll see you back here at noon. Have a good one.